Have you ever been in a situation where you created a Jira issue only to have accidentally created it as a story when it should have been a bug, or maybe you created a bug and it really should have been a task, right? We often make mistakes with our issue types and the gut reaction is to go delete it and start all over. But did you know that you actually can change the issue type of an issue after it's been created? If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out the links down below as I have links to my merch store, my paid courses, and most importantly, links to the sponsors of these videos. So go try out their apps. These videos are only possible because of the amazing sponsors that I have. So go show them some love, go show them some support, try out their apps, leave them a review, and let's jump into Jura. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. This video is sponsored by Appbox. So here we are inside of Jira, and let me kind of walk you through a typical use case, right? You come over here to the create button, and you blatantly ignore the fact that you have an issue type here, and this is your one and first opportunity to get this right. But let's just assume we pick bug, and we type it up. Uh, this is something cool. And of course, you fill out any other required information, but let's just say that we hit the create button here. And we go into our backlog. We're gonna go over here to our backlog and we're gonna take a look at our issue that we just created. Now, I somehow have these boards all configured all messed up so you won't be able to see it. But if you click on view issue here, it's gonna take us over to our view issue so that we can actually visualize this particular issue. So here's our issue and it is currently a bug. Now, let's just say that we don't want this to be a bug. We want this to actually be a task or something that is available within our project. Maybe let's, for this particular instance, maybe I want it to be an improvement, right? So as you can see, very, very easily, all I have to do is click on the icon itself in this particular spot, right? This will not work anywhere else. You have to click on this icon here and you're going to be able to change the issue type. So let's just say that this really should be, instead of a bug, it's a feature because it's not a bug, it's a feature, right? <laughs> and so as appropriately titled after my shirt here, let's just actually convert something that we thought was a bug, something we thought was a problem, but it is indeed a feature, right? So let's change it up and we're gonna change it to a feature. As you can see, that's how easy it is. All you gotta do is click on that new icon and that's it. Now, it's not always this easy and there's a couple of different things that I want you to be aware of. So in case you ever run into these problems. Now, best case, fingers crossed, your changing of issue types is as easy as literally clicking on that icon, picking the new issue type that you want, and then that's it, we're done. But sometimes life is not that simple. So a couple of things that you need to be aware of. If you have different fields that are required on that new issue type, on that destination issue type that we're trying to move to, well, guess what? Jira's gonna ask you, hey, I'm gonna need a little bit of extra information. So you're gonna be prompted, you're gonna be taken to a screen where you're gonna have to fill out that information and provide what, whatever those required fields are. And so then, then after you create that information, then it's gonna translate for you. So keep that in mind. Number two, and probably the most important, is when you want to make this change, when you actually want to change the issue type, not everybody's gonna be able to change the issue type. You have to have a special permission. Now, when you go to the project settings here on the left-hand side, and we go over to permissions, you're going to be tempted to look for like change issue type. But unintuitively, because to the untrained eye, you would never have guessed this unless you actually read through all these, right? But to the untrained eye, we are looking for the permission type called move issues. If you look at this one here, this is called the ability to move issues between projects or between workflows of the same project. Now, this is the key part. You would think that move, as I just described to you, right, is moving an issue from one project to another. But in this particular case, we're changing the issue type. So you may be asking yourself, what the heck does changing the issue type have to do with moving the, the issue to another project? Because we don't want to move it somewhere else. We just want to change the issue type. So we're spinning in place, right? Well, that's where that second part of this equation comes into play or between workflows of the same project. And so basically, in case you didn't know, right, some issue types, depending on how you configure a project, can have different workflows or they can all have the same. But whatever it is, whatever the case is, whether you have different workflows across different issue types or 
if you have the same workflow for the same issue type, you want to think of it as you're moving workflows, even if you're spinning in place and you're just, you're the same workflow, because this opens up two different things that I want to bring up. If your issue type, if you're going from one issue type, like the bug to that new improvement that, or that new feature that I did, they're the same workflow. So by clicking on that icon and just bringing it down so I can shift over to the next issue type that I want, we just spun in the same workflow. That's why it was so easy because nothing had to change. There weren't any extra required fields that I needed to fill out. And because I'm using the exact same workflow, the status that I'm in is still the status in the new workflow, which is the same workflow. So I'm able to do that change instantly because it's very simple. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. As a Jira admin, how do you keep your Jira instance well-maintained, optimized, and free of inactive or unused projects and configurations? Well, you could do this manually by yourself, or you could use the complete admin tool, Optimizer for Jira, to audit and configure clean up and optimize Jira in a matter of minutes. It's the secret superpower helping thousands of Jira admins worldwide keep their Jira instances in tip top shape. Check it out using the link in the description down below. And now back to the video. But as I mentioned a few minutes ago, if your issue type, the new one that you're going to has different required fields, where well, you're going to be prompted with the screen that's going to walk you and guide you through that process. And also, if that issue type that you're moving from, like that bug, to that new destination issue type, if it's a different workflow, then you're going to have to do that mapping as well because Jira needs to know, hey, I used to have this status, now I need this status. Help me because I don't know what it should be, right? And so you're going to have to do that mapping as well. Now, the example that I picked was very, very simple. It was the most basic, most ideal, optimal opportunity, which is no extra required fields. We're in the exact same workflow. We're just simply spinning in place. And you also, again, if I didn't finish stating this, right, you want to make sure that you have the ability to move issues because if you don't have this permission, if your name or group or role isn't on the right hand side over here for this particular move issues, you're not going to be able to do the changing of issue types, right? Again, a little bit counterintuitive because you think that you're going to be moving it to another project but that's not the case. We're simply just going to be spinning in place and best case scenario we're spinning in place with no extra field required, no changes to the workflow. But in the unlikely event that you are making some sort of a drastic change, like you are going to have those required fields or you are going to have a different workflow, rest assured that Jira is going to guide you through that process. In fact, why don't we do a quick demo, right? Because we can actually see here, if we go to our workflows, you're going to see that I have a workflow for everything except the Epic. So why don't we change it to an Epic so you can kind of see how this works. Now, this is only going to work most ideally if, if this particular issue type here has a different workflow than the statuses for the Epic. So we're just going to click refresh here because it's not loading on me, right? But I'm going to open up this DFS 12. I'm going to change it not to something that I want, but like an Epic, which does have a different issue type, just so you can see the reaction there. See, as you can see, once I pick the Epic, because it's going to be not a very simple transition, it's going to ask us, hey, what do you want this to be? And this is kind of where it can get confusing too, right? Because the project, you're going to be in the same project, but you do have now the ability to move to a different project. But trust me, you want to leave it here if your intention is to just simply change the issue type. So leave this one to be the same as the current. But now this is where you got to be careful, because if you're not careful, this is a two step process. You saw that I clicked on Epic earlier to get to this screen, but we're defaulted back to the current issue type. So we want to then basically do the same step twice. At last, if you're listening, this would be a cool feature to have where it remembers what I wanted it to be. You click on next, and then this is where you're gonna be prompted to fill out any of those required fields like this, right? So because I'm going to an Epic, I need to give it an Epic name. So I'll just do like change me so I can go back and change it later. This is where you can pick a different status for the Epic status. Again, this is gonna be all specific to whatever issue types you're moving from and to. And then once you do all your changes here, you get your status, your workflows, your fields, everything kind of all worked out. Then you're able to click that done button, confirm button. And now you can see that it's now an epic, right? And so again, those are the extra screens that you get if things are not simple, right? Obviously you want best case scenario, which is a very simple change. But if you do have some hurdles to go through, Jira's going to walk you through every step. So just read through everything. Be very, very cautious, right? Because some settings are not remembered and they're going to be reverted back to the original. So you want to make sure you are 
doing it essentially twice. Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's video. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. As a Jira admin, how do you keep your Jira instance well-maintained, optimized, and free of inactive or unused projects and configurations? Well, you could do this manually by yourself, or you could use the complete admin tool Optimizer for Jira to audit and configure clean up and optimize Jira in a matter of minutes. It's the secret superpower helping thousands of Jira admins worldwide keep their Jira instances in tip top shape. Check it out using the link in the description down below. And now back to the video. That's it for this video. If you found it beneficial, make sure you smash that subscribe button. If you really like this video, make sure you smash that like button as well. And don't forget to check out the links down below because if you've ever wondered, how can I help support this channel? Well, there's links down below to the merch store, to my paid courses and to links to the marketplace for the apps that make these videos possible, those sponsors, those amazing sponsors that I have. So go show them some love, go try out their apps, start a, three free, start a free 30 day trial and leave them a review. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. So fight and